you for coming to today's webinar on blood alcohol analysis using both the status and dynamic functions of the HT3. Today we have our presenter, Roger Barsley, who is our application chemist here at Teledyne Tech Park. And I will hand it over to Roger to begin the webinar. Thank you. Today's webinar presentation will cover both static and dynamic techniques. Currently, Teledyne Techmar offers headspace analysis with the HT3 headspace analyzer. This instrument is unique as it offers both static and dynamic analysis. The HT3 has many useful applications including environmental, pharmaceuticals, polymer and plastics, flavor and fragrances, and forensics, as today we'll discuss the blood alcohol analysis. There are many means by which analytes are injected into a GC. Most analysis is performed by direct injection with some prior sample preparation. However, this may result in a dirty injector and or column due to non-volatile residue being injected along with the analysis of interest. Headspace allows the analyst to exclude unwanted materials in the injection. And because headspace creates a gas phase injection, only the volatile components reach the GC. This means that any non-volatile material will remain in the vial. Because the sample is in a sealed vial, other chemicals or solvents may be added to the sample to adjust for matrix conditions and to enhance or suppress the response of a given compound. This chemistry in a vial is very useful to selectively adjust response factors. Solid samples are often difficult to analyze because they cannot be directly injected into the GC. Prior solvent extraction is a typical technique. This leads to high detection limits due to a small amount of the extract which ultimately is injected. Samples that have high concentrations of analytes of interest may be analyzed without fear of carryover. Again, the injector sees only a gas phase sample. The headspace system is heated to prevent absorption, which often is the cause for carrier. I'd like to provide a brief overview of headspace analysis before discussing blood alcohol analysis to review with those of you that may be new to the headspace or dynamic analysis process. Headspace is a sample preparation technique for both GC and GCMS spec. It is primarily for volatile organics, although it has capability to expand the range to higher volume compounds that are typically considered volatile. Generally speaking, the sample is placed in a glass vial, which is sealed with a Teflon phase system. The gas above the sample, typically air, is called the headspace. The sealed vial is heated to a temperature appropriate for both the sample matrix and the analyte. Volatile organics leave the sample and migrate into the headspace. The headspace is sampled by placing a needle into the vial, which is just pressurized, and allowing the sample to fill a fixed volume loop if using static, or continuously swept onto analytical trap if using the dynamic analysis mode. Now, there are many considerations that one must take into account when performing headspace analysis. First, the temperature can greatly affect headspace analysis. As you increase the sample of the temperature of your sample, you are also increasing the amount released within the vapor phase of your target analytes. Remember, though, that as you increase your sample temperature, you also increase the amount of water or other solvents from the matrix that is going to the trap as well if using dynamic analysis. The benefit of increasing the temperature is the improvement for the recoveries of polar compounds. The partition coefficient represents the ratio or concentrations or solubilities of an analyte between the sample matrix and the solvent. Those analytes with smaller K values will be least soluble in water. These tend to be your least volatile target analytes, however, and these will be your most sensitive compounds as well. The partition coefficient can be affected by temperature, salinity, and other functions. Here is a slide of the partition coefficients for class of organics in water at 50 degrees. As you can notice, the alcohols which are very soluble in water have the largest K values. Tecmar HT3 is a fully automated headspace analyzer offering both static and dynamic analysis within a single schedule. It's important to understand the different modes that the HT3 offers. As each, each technique has its inherent advantages that I'd like to briefly discuss today. I'd also like to remind those attending today that for the blood alcohol analysis, the typical analysis scheme is static headspace coupled with either FID or GC mass spec. We'll discuss this later in the presentation. The HT3 comes standard with, 
with static headspace, which is called a loop system. There will be a brief overview we'll, of how the system works, what kind of analysis can be performed, and how to optimize certain of the method parameters. Static headspace analysis can perform many types of applications which I mentioned earlier, such as pharmaceutical, environmental, forensics, such as the blood alcohol analysis that we're talking about today, polymers, and flavor and fragrance analysis. Techmar offers a wide variety of application notes for many of these analytes using the HD3 system. Please take time to visit the Techmar website regularly as we update and add new application notes often. With static headspace and analysis, the sample is placed into a vial and sealed. The sample is then delivered to the auto sampler, where it is then loaded into a sample platen for heating. Upon reaching its final set heating temp, the sample is then mixed for a set period of time. Using our patented electronic mass flow controller unique to the HT3 system, the static pressure of the vial is recorded, and then the sample is pressurized to a user-defined set point. The sample is then vented through a fixed volume loop to another user-defined final pressure set point. The loop containing the sample is then valve actuated to be placed in line with the GC column for separation detection. I'll show this in the next diagram. The gas comes into HT3 to pressurize the vial in the first step. The sample path that it takes. At this point, the vial is being pressurized. And then is released into the loop at a set amount of time, filling the loop with a consistent volume. See the flow diagram on this. that filling has been performed, then the loop is shut off and put into line with the GC gas to be injected onto the gas chromatograph. Headspace optimization is performed using the HT3 telelink software and also using the MOM system that we'll cover later in this pre presentation. By tailoring the instrumental parameters to the same sample, the HT3 offers the ability to fine tune your sample analysis by varying the following instrument parameters. Sample temperature, as you may remember, is important as higher temperatures shift the equilibrium to the favor of the head space. Temperature is limited to the boiling point of the sample solvent and the thermal stability of the sample components. Uh, the one is equal, equal, equilibration time. It is time required to reach equilibration and is dependent on the sample matrix, the analytes, and the temperature. Another one is vial pressurization. Pressurization of the vial assures the sample completely fills the sample loop and keeps all samples and standards consistent in pressure. This is monitored and recorded with the HT3 through the mass of the lead under the use of the mass flow controller. Sample mixing through the use of the Optimix system allows a variable power setting from 1 to 10 and sample loops of 500 microliter as well as 1, 2, 3, and 5 mil sample size. The loop fill pressure is the pressure that the sample in the vial decreases to fill the loop. When optimizing your static headspace method parameters, it is important to understand how these changes affect your analysis. We'll briefly discuss some of these parameters. The valve oven and transfer line temperature play an important role, especially when the sample is about to be delivered to the GC system. If the oven and transfer line temperatures are lower than the inlet temperature, you may introduce a cold spot and not adequately achieve chromatography. When tailoring headspace operating parameters to achieve optimal sensitivity for a particular analysis, one parameter to consider is the temperature where the sample will be heated. While headspace can be formed at ambient temperature, it is not particularly effective. Elevated temperatures help to shift the equilibrium in favor of the headspace. 
However, the temperature selected is limited by, first, the boiling point of the sample solvent. Generally, the vial should be heated at a temperature no higher than 15 degrees below the boiling point of the solvent. Some samples are thermally liable, such as biological matrices. Cannot tolerate elevated temperatures either. The amount of time the sample has to equilibrate at a particular temperature is totally dependent on the sample matrix. Analytes that are being determined and the temperature. At equilibrium, the analyte concentration in the headspace is at a maximum and will not change significantly with longer heating times. However, if the sample does not equilibrate within a reasonable amount of time, the head phase can still be sampled as long as the equilibration time is kept constant for all samples. Pressurizing the vial content with inert gas prior to filling the sample loop helps to ensure the loop gets completely filled with sample. Pressurization also improves reproducibility since solid samples may not yield consistent static pressures upon heating. Pressurization only needs to be set 2 to 4 psi above the static pressure. Too high a pressurization setting will result in dilution of the headspace contents with the inert pressurizing gas. Later in this presentation, I'll present data indicating the effects of varying this parameter. Sample matrix is a parameter available to assist you with troubleshoot troublesome matrix. The HD3 offers various mixing levels and speeds using the OptiMix system, which allows for very power settings from 1 to 10. To use this option, simply select Mixer On, and the appropriate mixing variable will become available. By optimizing the sample mixing time and level, you can increase the amount of target analytes going into the headspace. In terms of sample use loops used in headspace analyzers, you have to balance the factors described on this slide. When the analyzer steps to fill the sample loop after the vial has been pressurized, probably the best way to determine the optimum loop fill time is to attach a flow meter to the vent and monitor the flow. The HC3 ships with a one mil sample loop that is common for many types of static applications. Now I'd like to start talking about the dynamic part of the headspace. Dynamic trapping mode is standard also on the HD3. Process is somewhat different than the static headspace and analysis, and we'll discuss that in detail. For those of you not familiar with the dynamic or trapping mode of the HT3, I've included a photo here. This shows the standard 12-inch trap required for many EPA methods. It is in the front of the HT3 and is easily accessible. Oil around the trap is the heater and provides a nice uniform heating for the entire length of the trap. In the dynamic mode, upon completion of heating and mixing as discussed in this previous static mode slides, the headspace is continuously slept with an inert sample gas that is routed through a sort of trap, thus removing more of the analyte and concentrating it on the trap. The trap is heated and back flushed to the GC for separation and detection. The dynamic mode utilizes, again, the standard 12-inch analytical trap and shifts with a Bocard K trap in place. There is a new number nine priority trap that is also available for the HT3. Now I'd like to show you the slope diagram on dynamic mode. Again, the gas enters the HT3, and this time the vial is swept with the gas Stick going and concentrating it onto the trap here. At that point, the analytes are trapped onto the trap. The trap will then begin to desorb and heat it to inject the samples onto the GC. Thank you. In dynamic headspace, you receive improved select sensitivity, which will give you lower MDLs. You can increase your dynamic range, place MHE concentration techniques, 
multiple sorbent choices can be used for a variety of analysis. And again, by continually sweeping these analytes, these are some of the uses of the dynamic mode. Dynamic headspace optimization can be accomplished using the HT3 by tailoring instrumental parameters to the sample. Again, you can fine tune your analysis through the following parameters. Sweep flow rate, sweep flow time, which are the times that you're sweeping the vial. The dry purge time, the dry purge flow, and the dry purge temperature where you're equilibrating your trap before injecting it onto it, the GC. You can also change the desorb preheat temperatures, the desorb temperature, and the desorb time, affecting how you want to inject that onto the GC. Then afterwards, you can change the trap bake temperature and the trap bake time to clean that trap off, preparing for the next analysis to minimize carryover. This is an example of the HT3 method optimization screen using either the dynamic, which is also called the trapping mode. List all the parameters that can be manipulated so that the analysis can be fine-tuned. Understanding how these parameters affect your sample analysis is very important. Please remember using some EPA methods, SOPs, or other guidelines, not all parameters are permitted to be altered and must be kept in accordance to those specific rules or regulations. Dynamic headspace is not the mode of choice for benzyl alcohol or blood alcohol analysis. However, we'll discuss later the parameters used for our investigation and the effects of varying each on the result. Trap standby temperature is the temperature the trap must reach before the next analysis can begin. This ensures that each run is performed under the same temperature. A good setting for the trap during standby is typically 35 to 45 degrees. Sweep volume is dependent on the sweep flow rate and the sweep flow time. The sensitivity of your analysis can be controlled by the sweep flow volume. If you're trying to increase the sensitivity, remember to adjust both the sweep flow rate and the sweep flow time. During dry purge, there are several parameters that can be optimized during the dry purge process. The amount of time and rate that dry gas is passed through the trap to remove excess water is affected by your dry purge time and flow parameters. Too high a dry purge volume, flow, and time can cause weakly absorbing compounds to escape from the trap and be vented, resulting in poor recoveries of those compounds. Dry purge temperature. This temperature is important to help remove as much water from a sample as possible. Water removal and trap temperatures are very important. Usually a good dry purge temperature is better on the lower end of the scale. 20 to 40 degrees is in parameter that you can vary if you're having problems with water in your analysis. This temperature on the desorb preheat is usually kept around 5 degrees lower than the desorb temperature. During this mode, the target analytes are on the analytical trap and are about to be released to the GUC system. <laughs> Excuse me. During the desorb mode, desorb preheat is important to allow the trap to adequately free the target analytes from the trap packing material. The desorb temperature then is usually set about 5 degrees above that of the desorb preheat. This is the setting the trap must reach before rotating the eight point valve to allow the carrier gas to sweep the target analytes onto the GC column. Again, too high of a desorb temperature could cause thermal degradation of compounds. Another parameter is the desorb time. This plays an important role as this is the time the eight port valve rotates, allowing the sample to be swept on the column. Too short of time and you may not collect your heavier compounds. Remember that with desorb times, as it varies with compounds, it will also depend on the absorbent efficiency of the trap itself. During the baking process, the trap is heated to a higher temperature setting and for a set period of time to remove any target analytes prior to the acquisition of the next sample. This baking process just helps with carryover issues, especially in highly concentrated samples. Remember that the track bake time is a variable that you can manipulate to fine tune your analysis. The track bake time allows for any remaining targets to be baked off of the trap. Too short of a time, you may say carryover or ghost peaks in your next sample. If you have too long of a bake time, 
you are extending your analysis time longer than need be. The average bake time is about four to six minutes. Now, as we discussed previously, the HD3 has a software function to it called the MOM, Method Optimization Mode. When a certain technique or list of target compounds is new and needs some method development or fine tuning, this is where you'd use your MOM. Method parameter optimization can be performed quite easily through the use of this. This is a new and improved feature of the HT3. It can be used for both the trap or loop modes of the instrument, and both modes can be used at the same time within a single schedule. BOM offers a quick and easy way to automatically build the schedule. You have to go out and create 10 or 15 different methods for 10 or 15 different parameter changes. We'll discuss steps taken during this process in the following slides. When opening the MOM, the sample temperature field was selected. Note, you may use the MOM function for both trap and loop modes. Simply select the proper mode and the appropriate variable will become available. Trap portion of the study, the sample temperature was varied. Pull down menu became available. Next, the temperature range desired was selected and then the proper increments at which the variable was to be changed was placed in the proper fields. Once all have fields have been filled, the Applied button is pressed up in the upper right-hand corner of the window. Once again, once this has been applied, the MOM builder will complete this variable under the current schedule shown here. As you can see, it filled the temperature from 30 to 90 degrees automatically. Now, you didn't have to create different methods for each of those temperatures. After the temperature variable was selected, we chose to vary the sweep flow rate to optimize this parameter as well. Note that without the MOM functions, many separate and time consuming method methods would need to be run and manually entered for each file. The MOM builder does all of the variable and schedules entry for the user. Here the start and step values for the sweep flow rate are entered into the appropriate field, and then once again the applied button is selected. So the code of the operation is add. So it will add it to the thing. Now if you notice the change, the selection has been entered to the schedule, and it's now 14 vials. Make note to change your start and stop positions for each variable you change so you do not reuse the vial that has already been used in a previous step. Once the mom parameters have been fine-tuned and the data reviewed, the end user will enter the person in the method parameter screen of TechLink and save them for their final method. Now, talking about the blood space, blood analysis alcohol, excuse me, blood alcohol analysis by static head space, we started this process by using parameters from the previous Techmore headspace at 7,000. The assay time, the resolution of all the compounds, and the high equivalent to a theoretical plate were considered. This plot of the high equivalent to a theoretical plate indicates that ethanol is optimal between 12 and 14 mils per minute. Therefore, 12 mils is selected for the evaluation of the valve pressure and the loop pressure parameters. The other part that you have to take into consideration when optimizing your flow rate is the effect on the chromatography. Again, the 12 mil was decided because the runtime was under 2 minutes versus the 8 mil per minute assay, while still maintaining reasonable resolution between the methanol and acetaldehyde peaks 1 and 2 and the isopropanol and acetone peaks 4 and 5. As you can see from the chromatography, there is no solvent water peak interfering with the chromatography. Once the flow rate was optimized, the valve pressure and the loop pressures were varied to determine the best ratio. A 7-point calibration curve from 0.002% to 0.32% ethanol was run for each variable combination. The valve pressure was significantly greater than the loop pressure. The correlation coefficients for some of the compounds decreased indicating a loss of precision. 
a similar loss of precision was observed when the valve pressure and the loop pressures were the same as indicated in the data. The method op was optimized at a valve pressure of 10 and a loop pressure of 5. Once these parameters were determined, a series of seven standards were this is an example of one of those chromatograms for blood alcohols. This shows chart shows the percent RSD for the compounds on both columns. The BAC1 column is the quantitation column. The BAC2 column is a confirmation column. As you can see, um, target compound ethanol has excellent precision and reproducibility. Again, once the mom parameters have been fine-tuned and the data reviewed, these value cues are entered into the method parameter screen of the tech link and saved. Switching back to dynamic headspace mode, this slide exhibits the effects of changing the sweep flow rate while maintaining the other parameters. The sweep flow rate was changed from 5 mils per minute to 8, 11, and 14 mils per minute. Again, the best sweep flow rate for the dynamic headspace method was determined to be the first point, 5 mils per minute. As you can see, the others started overloading the system with too much sample. The HC3 automated headspace analyzers offers controlling software allowing for multiple parameter changes as well as alternate file sizes within a single schedule. The HC3 is a fixed loop system, fixed loop system with the option for a trapping module to be added. Both loop and trap analysis can be scheduled in the same run. Static valve pressure is recorded for each loop, and the constant heat features keeps the HT3 and the GC cycle synchronized. All these unique features enable the HT3 to be a very versatile instrument for any laboratory setting. Again, as shown in previous slides for static analysis, this is the optimum method parameters for a 0.002% ethanol standard using both the BAC1 and the BAC2 column. Lastly, I'd like to discuss the additional benefits of the HT3. These include a built-in 60-position auto sampler, a 10-position platen, which allows up to 10 vials to be simultaneously heated. The heat can go up to 300 degrees in one degree increments one degree C increments. Static and dynamic sampling capabilities can be performed in with a, within a single schedule. Both the static and the dynamic capabilities of the instrument are into it, built into it. There is no options to order. Uh, the have the ability to use a 9, 12, and 22 mil vial. Sample can be again heated to 300 degrees. There is a removable silco steel sample pathway. This is also temperature controlled to 300 degrees. There is a variable fill pressure control. There is the automatic, automatic method optimization mode, commonly referred to as MOM, in which the base field, base method fields offer a pull down menu allowing easy access to the a list of the methods. Depending on your selection of loop or trap, the pull-down menu will offer the proper available parameters for which to choose. The HT3 also offers standard and CFR software control, as well as the ability to run multiple vial sizes in one schedule. Finally, summarizing headspace analysis, the HT3 automated headspace analyzer offers controlling software, <coughs> excuse me, aligned for multiple parameter changes as well as alternate file sizes within a single schedule. HT3 is a fixed loop system and a trapping mode system. Both loop and trap analysis can be scheduled in the same run again. Static valve pressure is recorded for every loop sample, and the constant heat feature keeps the HT3 and the GC cycle synchronized. There are several factors in keeping in mind when determining when to use static or dynamic headspace analysis, sample matrix, the target analyte list, and the detection limits. In general, dynamic headspace is more sensitive than static. Dynamic, again, delivers nearly all the volatiles to the GC. 
Some compounds may be difficult to analyze at low concentrations using static because of the affinity of the polar analytes to the aqueous sample. This in closing is a comparison of the static and dynamic head states both for blood alcohol. Top chromatogram is a dynamic analysis, which is the trap method for blood alcohols using the VAC column. Bottom is a static analysis using the same VAC1 column. Both indicate good chromatography while presenting the lower texture limit capabilities when using the dynamic mode. If you're interested in reading any of our applications, please visit our website applications page at http www.teledyntechmar.com slash applications slash index dot ASP. Some of our coming webinars are listed here also. Your attendance at this webinar is greatly appreciated. Please take a moment to review our list of additional upcoming webinars that may be of interest to you. And feel free to email Teledyne Techmar with any suggested topics you would enjoy attending. Thank you. For notice, the email address is uh, techmarinfo at teledyne.com. That's T-E-K-M-A-R-I-N-F-O at teledyne.com. And thanks, Roger. That was a great presentation. And that concludes our webinar for today. And we'll open it up to questions now. Thank you very much. <laughs>